Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Crack Nate Steve. About to react to this short TV vid. It's titled Celebrities You Didn't Know Scam People. Oop. Why is JT in the thumbnail? Who does she scam? Well, let's see what's going on. Let's watch. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice and you watch the Choice TV. <laughs> I wanted to get on here and talk about the fact that a lot of y'all don't realize that a lot of your favorite entertainers are scammers and shit people who don't pay their taxes and individuals Ooh. who basically try to navigate and play the system and use their stock power to start them to get away with a lot of I shit. And what mostly inspired this video where, if y'all didn't know, the famous pop singer Sean Kingston, whom, if y'all didn't know, is getting a lot of flack right now because he's involved with a lot of scams, fraudulent behavior, not paying his team, not paying people he's associated with, and trying to use his star power to get free shit, on top of his mother also being involved with her scamming activities. In a courtroom today, South Florida rapper Sean Kingston and his mother are facing state and federal charges. They're both accused of a multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Oh. oh, it gets worse. The piece of caca even went as far as trying to scam droolers, where basically he promised a lot of droolers promotion and all types of things. And basically, he ran off with thousands of dollars worth of jewelry, and the family who owned the jewelry store even outed him. My customer called me up, wanted to sell some jewelry to Sean Kingston. He said, yo, be careful, this guy's a group. He's a scumbag. That's what he do. He's screw people. I mean, Sean Kingston turned around, he put a gun on me. He was like, you have no money where I got no money. And I guess he got nervous because I didn't, like, get nervous about the gun. Let me count, since your man can't count. Because I thought you, like, you need to count somewhere. Did he point the gun at you? Yeah, because I was in the back seat. We were in the coupe. Just pulled the gun out, pocket the back then we can't forget about the infamous scandal where sean keeson was offered a jet at a discounted rate in exchange for promotion and many more things and sean keeson instead of paying for the jet and instead of following through with everything he promised he went on to use the jet for his personal tour and his personal usage just literally go ghost on a company that lent him the jet for a discounted rate. Story time of how Sean Kingston scammed me and my company. So I am a private jet broker for Nava Jets and I also run their social media. So one day we got a message from Sean Kingston. He was interested in one of our planes for sale and came to Palm Beach with his family to see the plane. He said he was going on tour and wanted this plane ready soon and there was no Wi-Fi. So we flew the plane from Palm Beach to Fort Lauderdale for our mechanics to install the Wi-Fi for him for it to be ready for his tour. And this was out of our expense. We had to pay the pilots and for the fuel and everything. He came again to Fort Lauderdale, brought his family and friends. Um, we popped the champagnes, we shook hands, agreed on a price, and they signed the contract. The contract stated that the payment is due in full within the three days of signing. And Sean was posting that this is his jet that he bought it with not even a dollar down. He was telling us that we can be in him and Justin Bieber's new music video, um, just leading us on, saying that he would pr promote Nava Jets and just a bunch of crap. When the third day came and the payment was due, they went ghost and they blocked us. Just bought a check. I just bought a check. I just bought a check. People who bought just bought a Hey, God is amazing. When they tell wow. you they can't, they hate you. They don't want you to stop. They try to make you get in depression and feel less about yourself. I tell them niggas you. So I decided to make a video and talk about all the entertainers who got caught up with their scams and why a lot of your favorite entertainers are living above their means. In a world where a lot of people are struggling, because let's be real, a lot of people are struggling. Inflation's at an all-time high. Globally, no matter where you go, things are insanely expensive. And people who are native to their own cities, wherever they live, can barely afford to live there. And they're having to navigate elsewhere in other cities. The sad part about everybody struggling is a lot of people are in excruciating credit card debt. Now, you guys see a lot of your favorite entertainers and influencers and YouTubers That's get on the I'm internet and they friend. flex their luxurious lifestyles. A lot of them are really getting to the bag and doing pretty well, but a good majority of them are actually scammers, sugar babies, hookers, and escorts. But it's not okay when they put on a crazy facade and a crazy image to make it seem like they're doing so well and they're involved with really great activities. And then they go as far as to sell you guys classes and courses on how they can coach you to be successful. They haven't even made that their damn selves. They make money based off of them teaching you how to do things. A lot of reality TV stars, entertainers, musicians, and even rappers are involved with human trafficking, are involved with, you know, moving weight to get a profit. And a lot of them are involved with a lot of salacious and inappropriate activities just take care of themselves. Speaking of human trafficking, did y'all know that the actress from Smallville, Allison Mack, was really out here trafficking people? Why are you 
From starring in Smallville to landing in big trouble, actress Allison Mack, who played Chloe Sullivan in the Superman prequel series, barely said a word in a federal courtroom Friday as she was charged with sex trafficking. Prosecutors say under the guise of a women's self-help and empowerment group, the Albany-based organization that calls itself Nexium was seducing women to abandon their old lives and come join the cult, where some members were brainwashed, branded, and used as sex slaves for the group's leader, Keith Ranieri. Mac, a business partner and so-called slave master, was said to be second in command. Prosecutors Ooh. say Mac led the recruitment for the group and specifically targeted vulnerable women and starved women to fit the sex ideals of Ranieri. And I don't want to see her put away. She's dangerous, she's sick, she's evil, she's dark, and she's done harm to many people. But the list of entertainers that have been accused or may be involved with trafficking is a whole other video. But damn, not Allison Mack. Again, you would think these people are doing so well because they were on these hit TV shows. Oh, but obviously, looks can be deceiving. You really never know who's struggling, going through it, and trying to hustle and screw people over to make a profit to sustain their lifestyle. White Girl Cyrus was a very popular R&B singer during the pandemic, and he did exceptionally well after his song Worth It blew up. But did y'all know that he was out here struggling financially to the point where he blew all his money away and he was out here borrowing money from Drake? Then Drake mm -hmm. literally embarrassed his ass as a way to pay back that money. I, I owe you no more. I owe you no more. You owe me 60 bands? Or if you have to perform the song right now in the crib, what are we talking about? What are you talking about? I'm giving you an out. I'm not baby. I'm not boozy. You don't owe me no two rags, five rags. You owe me 60 bands? I'm playing the song right now. You ready? I need you, I need a full performance. Huh? You won't owe me no money right now. I swear, I need a full performance though. The real shit though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Drake is shady as fuck. <laughs> and to be honest with you, let's go a little bit deeper. Did y'all know that some of your favorite entertainers like Wes yeah, Snipes nice, even pay did pay. jail time because he didn't pay a taxes worth over $30 million? The day of reckoning for Orlando-born mm -hmm. actor Wesley Snipes is December 9th. By noon, he has been ordered to report to prison in Pennsylvania or risk additional criminal charges. In 2008, Snipes was found guilty in Ocala of failing to file income taxes for a three-year period in which he earned just under $40 million. His sentence, three years in prison. But this isn't a done deal just yet. Snipes is appealing on two fronts. His legal team has indicated they may take the repeal of Snipes' conviction to the U.S. Supreme Court. And just today, Snipes' legal team filed with the uh, U.S. 11th Circuit Court in Atlanta. Can you tell us, Dan, in simple terms, why is your client going to jail Thursday? My client, oh, because the jury... Let me just say... We, we still have prayers out there, Larry, and we, we still believe in miracles. So don't don't send me up the river just yet. All right? Okay. Don't send me up the river just yet. All right? Okay. He <laughs> ended up doing 28 months in prison, facing jail time in December of 2010, and then, of course, getting out of jail in 2013. Ooh. Obviously, he was found guilty, and he got a misdemeanor charge for failing to file his taxes with over $30 million worth of revenue. And, of course, he did face charges for trying to claim an $11 million return. For over eight years, he engaged in numerous steps of tax defiance conduct, everything from submitting bogus bills of exchange to the government to accusing the government that the actual tax prosecutors are at risk if they go after him. And uh, I must say, I did not realize... Oh, I still haven't figured out why they felt it was so important. You know, the it's idea that they classified it as the, the biggest trial in the history of the... I thought, wow, am I really that important? Look at the Taxes money are not a joke. Large. If you have a business or any business of some kind, pay it. Ari Lennox even came forth recently and said that she's in a lot of financial trouble and she's struggling to literally pay off her taxes. This woman has traveled the world and made millions of dollars and she can't even afford to pay her taxes in full. And it's like, mm -hmm. damn girl, what happened to that shea butter baby money? I'm just gonna tell you all my business. Her life life pleasure, obviously. Ain't she under Draco? I need to pay this IRS. So I'm gonna do a change. Oh. 
just so I can just break even. I'm, I'm gonna go crazy, and then we start a new. You would not be able then, to waterboard this out of me. I would never, never reveal it. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go on live and tell niggas that I'm struggling and I can't pay some shit. Excuse me? What? We start. I don't know why these people, these celebrities, do not get online and, and like, start making money on, like, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Why don't y'all turn into influencers? Do y'all feel like y'all too good for it or what? I'm sure they see people who are making good amounts of money in this space. So you don't think that you could transfer that over with your star power? You can. If people can come from nothing and be literal nobodies and start posting online consistently and build up their audience, where do you think you're going to start from? You're going to start from a much higher level than everybody else because you already have fame. So why not use that to your advantage? I don't get these people. It makes no sense. I would start vlogging immediately. You hear me? The, the moment I'm starting to sense that, oh shit, I'm struggling financially, I'm not going to get on Instagram live and start telling niggas I'm broke and I'm struggling. I'm going to pick up a fucking camera and I'm going to start talking about my life. I'm going docu to document some shit. Hello. And it, it, yeah, if you're going to expose some shit how you broke, why not to make that to a video, a YouTube video? That would do numbers. You could buy or make money from that. Get some traction from that. Get some subscribers from that. Build your platform. You going on Instagram for free talking about how you ain't making money? Where is the common sense? Our pants stuff off and then we start saving and then we retire. Then we have Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart literally did five months in jail. That's something that most people don't talk about unless you grew up in that era. She did five months in jail exactly. because she was living above her means and she was involved with a lot of stock trading scams, which then caught up with her ass. The home decorating diva is accused of lying to the government about know, a stock trade. Stuck. In December of 2001, yeah, she yeah, abruptly okay. sold nearly 4,000 shares of M Club worth $227,000. Just a day before bad news broke about the company's cancer drug. That trade saved her at least $46,000 in losses. And let's face it, she sold that stock at a very suspicious time. Charles Gasparino broke the Stewart story for the Wall Street Journal and is now writing a book on the Wall Street scandal. How would anybody know to sell a day before that announcement? And by the way, if she did have information that people didn't have, she should be held accountable. Stewart told investigators she had a standing order with her broker, Peter Bakanovic, who's also on trial, to sell the stock if it fell below $60. But Bakanovic's assistant is expected to testify his boss lied about that alibi. Inclode's founder, Sam Waxel, a close friend of Stewart's, is already serving seven years for insider trading. If convicted, Stewart could face up to 30 years in prison Jeez. for a transaction that saved her all of $46,000 Shit is falling. Are you serious? This is the home goods lady. This lady freaking makes oh, turkeys and pies and cupcakes and shit. Amazing. And essentially the gist of it was this. She invested into a company called Unclone, where basically they were just developing a cure for cancer or a oh, treatment for cancer. Involved. And essentially <laughs> since the FDA was going to reject it, Martha got an anonymous tip, well, anonymous at the time, from someone who so was associated with her brokerage team and someone who was associated with her financial team who told her that because the FDA was going to reject it, she needs to sell her stock immediately. Now, this information was illegally obtained, and that led to her, of course, selling her stock because she got some secret tips. There was a message from Peter Bakanovic, her stockbroker, that read, Peter Bakanovic thinks Imclone is going to start trading downward. The government claims that Stewart returned the call but spoke to Bakanovic's assistant, Douglas Fanyu who told her that Sam Waxel was trying to sell off his shares. The government says Stewart, being a former stockbroker, should have known that the tip was improper, yet she proceeded to sell all her shares. How much money did you actually save by selling your implant stock the day before that announcement? I think it amounted to approximately $40,000, about 0.006%. Of my net worth. So this was not a big amount of money. Not at all. But let's go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. A lot of our favorite entertainers didn't just do problematic stuff, didn't just avoid paying their taxes. Some of them even went as far as legitimately oh, scamming sure. people just to make a profit. Listen, let it out. It's okay. This is a safe place. So a couple of years ago, I had the IRS come see me, asking me questions about stuff. All of a sudden, I get up. 
a call from my lawyer. What? What the f are we talking about? You don't have to worry about it. I know what to do. You have a good day. Say, you've been indicted. British Williams, as we all know, is a 34-year-old reality TV star whom we all know from Basketball Wives LA. But did y'all know that British Williams pleaded guilty to 15 felonies, including five counts of social security number misuse, four counts of bank fraud, three counts of false statements to the IRS, and three like counts of wire fraud? Problem. British Williams, who was 33 at the time, pleaded guilty in May to 15 felony and five counts of misuse of social security numbers. She was out here literally pretending, pretending that she couldn't work and she had no financial means during the pandemic. And she tried to get all types of COVID relief. She tried to get all types of money. Same thing with her man, Lorenzo Gordon, who's her ex-boyfriend, who also was facing charges and was also indicted earlier this year in January. Mm -hmm. So she was out here finessing, scamming, and screwing people over. British Williams was sentenced to four years in prison for committing over $564,000 worth of fraud Those are the last on top of all were. this fraud she also has to do four years in prison and she also has to pay over they five hundred thousand dollars in restitution fees because of her horrible crime this was all displayed on the tv show basketball wives and paparazzi followed her for weeks leading up to her prison Here's sentence the, and as of now the... she's currently in prison <laughs> British also I'm made over $144,000 in PPP loans, making it seem like she was going to start businesses with these loans. And she even took advantage of California's rent relief program. And she basically committed fraud in order to obtain a shit ton of money to pay for her lavish lifestyle, her trips across LA, her trips overseas, and the pay for her many, many fancy ass friends' lifestyles as well. How yeah, unfortunate is that my people friend who are actually struggling and need the money, Everyone but you got this too. chick who's in a big ass house and traveling the fucking world and she's submitting for the fact that she can't pay her bills because of the pandemic express. Then we have Mike the Situation from Jersey Shore. Mike the Situation, also known as Mike Sorrentino, famous from Jersey Shore, faced legal troubles back in 2014 related to tax fraud. Incarceration. Mike Sorrentino, better known as The Situation on MTV's Jersey Shore, was sentenced Friday to eight months in prison for his role in a scheme to evade taxes. How you feeling, man? The reality star didn't have much to say after the sentencing, which was handed down in Newark Federal Court. His brother, Mark Sorrentino, was also charged in the case. He was sentenced to two years in prison. We're disappointed. Um, we asked for a probation term. Uh, we hoped for a probation term. Authorities say the reality star, along with his brother, purposely underreported an income that amounted to $8.9 million. All that fucking money he made, he couldn't even pay his taxes on time. Mike and his brother, Mark Serratino, were charged with several counts of tax-related offenses, including conspiracy to defraud the United States. And here are a few key details that they were involved with. They were involved in tax evasion and were accused of failing to pay taxes on $8.9 million of income that Mike earned between 2010 That's and 2012. Money. And they also failed to report property report income from multiple sources, including promotional events and TV appearances. And Mike pleaded guilty to one count of tax evasion. He was sentenced to eight months in federal prison and was ordered to pay $123,000 in restitution, along with a fine of $10,000. His brother Mark received a two-year prison sentence for his role in the scheme. Why is your brother indicted for your failure to pay taxes? He was my business manager, and he was a part of my LLCs, and when they indicted us, it was just various crimes between both of us. At the end of the day, I didn't file. In 2011, I just made five million bucks. It's Christmas dinner. Mom's got shrimp oregano on the oven and I got the Lamborghini outside and my brother comes up to me and he's like, you know, you just made five million bucks, it's time to file. And then I'm sitting there high on rocks. I was just GQ's sensation of the year, it was 2010. I'm all high on myself and he hesitated. He's like, or we can get him next year. And I was like, get him next year and <laughs> that's exactly how it happens it's like a martin scorsese movie oh, it's like there's some humor in it or whatever and three years later they uncle sam came knocking at the airport with seven windbreakers uh, with the subpoenas that you're being investigated by a grand jury for tax crimes 
after his eight month mm. sentencing, he seems to have taken accountability, hopefully. JT, who we all know from the City Girls, Jatavia Shakara Johnson, known for the City Girls, basically, essentially, went to jail for scamming. And we all know this because it was a big part of her brand. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, people were going around exactly. screaming free JT. I forgot that she It's sad because it's always yeah. one particular culture that always promotes freeing certain people that committed a fucking crime. <laughs> so I never understood the whole free JT, free British, and all these other people. She began her sentencing in July of 2018. But of course, she got an early release despite receiving a two-year sentence. Even though she was still fairly successful and is doing okay now, it did take an effect on her group because she couldn't go on tour. She couldn't travel the world. She couldn't promote herself. She could do more music videos. She couldn't do things. Her being in jail obviously made her famous and stand out even more, but she couldn't even really enjoy the fruits of her labor. And by the time she got out of jail, we were already in a global pandemic express. That's why you gotta be careful what you do because energy attracts energy. You put out a certain energy, it will come right back. So that's why, even if we're humans and we make mistakes, try your best to literally do things within the law because the universe or God or whatever you believe in sees everything. You may think you'll never get away for scamming people or playing or fucking people over, but it will catch up with you. Okay. It will. And eventually, like you'll credit have a moment card where for you'll ask people for money and Good nobody will want to help you because everybody knows that you're on that whole okay. fucking people over shit. Then we have G Herbo. G Herbo, one of the most prominent Chicago rappers to come out of the city, was involved in a federal fraud case that surfaced in 2020. The case was centered on an alleged multi-million dollar fraud scheme involving stolen identities and unauthorized use of credit card information. Chicago rapper G Herbo, he and five other men charged with using stolen credit cards to charter private jets, rent exotic cars and a villa in Jamaica, and buy designer puppies. The six men were charged <laughs> in federal wild. court in Massachusetts. This week, G Herbo made Forbes annual 30 under 30 list, which highlights young leaders and entrepreneurs. Here's a basic breakdown of the shit G Herbo's ass was involved with that many people oftentimes don't pay attention to and overlook. So the Chicago rapper was doing a lot more than y'all think. The Chicago rapper was also involved in a lot of credit card fraud with his associate, Antonio Strong. They were involved in I've buying been a private jets, of credit card fraud. luxury I'll talk expenses, about it. and they spent That's over $62,000 on a private jet expense. They bought over $10,000 worth of Yorkshire puppies, spent thousands on luxury vacations, and they spent thousands of dollars on car rentals, and they even lied and pretended that they were representing labels like Sony and Universal just to illegally obtain this credit card information. And it's sad because they spent over $2 million on several people's information all across the U.S. And it's sad because to be a big rapper and to be literally scamming, it tells you a lot about how much rappers are really making. But that's why I should say, that's why I always say, be careful who you idolize and be careful who you look at on social media because yes, you see the jewelry and yes, you see the nice clothes, but let's be real. A lot of them are renting this stuff. A lot of them get this stuff for free. A lot of entertainers aren't paying for this shit. They get it for free and that's why they have a luxury They're lifestyle. Scamming. They're selling a luxury lifestyle to you. And it's a shame that the youth and a lot of young men that look like these scammers and female scammers want to look like these people and dress like these people. But I this video. Hot mess. I used to think I was good and protected from scamming because I'm like, oh, I'm smart. I'll never fall for these scam emails I always get or the scam phone calls. No, people will find a way to get you. So one of the times I got scammed, um, basically, you know, when you're in an apartment complex and mail is being delivered, they will open up all of the mailboxes. Okay, okay, and the mailman will go around and take his sweet time, you know, putting everybody's mail in. But, you know, everybody's uh, mailbox is vulnerable at that time. So someone went in the mail room and while, you know, he's distracted, not paying attention, they like taking people's random mail. This is when I was living near Skid Row, the ghetto. I had to get it from up over there. So, you know, just my luck, there was a credit card in my mailbox. Like, my last car credit card had expired, so they were sending me a new one. And they, they got it. So, they got it just in time. And I remember I was thinking, like, why is my credit card taking so long to get here? Like, it's been weeks at this point. I checked my information, lo and behold. They swipe and shit, charge and shit. Had to call the credit card company, got all my money back, of course. The second time I got scammed, <laughs> I have no idea how they got my credit card information because it was that card was in my possession. But I heard that they have new sophisticated shit now. Sometimes you'll charge your card somewhere to buy something and there'll be like a device or a chip in there that, you know, gets your information. So I think that's what happened and somebody was charging up hella shit on Timu of all places. I'm like, this is so ghetto. You buying thousands of dollars worth of shit from 
cheap ass Timu. Uh, but yeah, I hit up my my company, my credit card company, and I got all my money back. But they were so stupid. It's like you're getting shit shipped to you. Like your address is right here. Your your phone number is right here. I text them too. I was like, I'm I'm reporting you. You going to jail, bitch? <laughs> You know, then I blocked them because I don't, I want a response. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, those are the two times like I I got scammed child from credit card scammers. I'm like, damn, ain't this about a bitch? I thought I was safe, but no, you're not safe. They'll find a way to get you at some point. Um, but yeah, this is wild. These scammers out here, y'all be safe. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're gonna be watching. I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.